hey guys welcome back to my channel my name is tiana if you're new here and for the persons who have been with me since day one i really appreciate it so much in today's <laughs> about my second surgery that i did in 2020 um hasn't been easy like going back down this road again but i'm gonna share it with you guys now my second surgery that i did was on monday december 28th and i did a hysteroscopy now what is a hysteroscopy so in layman terms, a hysteroscopy is where they use a device and go through the vagina and remove any scarring, any additional tissues that should not be there in the uterus or close to the uterus, I should say. And they use the device to look on the tissue and then remove it with whatever instruments now for those of you who have not watched my video um in january i did a fibroid removal surgery and um i did a laparoscopic surgery so what they did was they gave me five incisions and on my stomach and they went to the uterus to remove the fibroids now the sad thing about that is um that surgery actually left me with scar tissues so when i went to the doctor in august i learned that i had um, a lot of scar tissues from they were seen a polyp let me not say that they were seen a polyp so when i did my saline ultrasound um when the fluid went in because i had to go in to test to see if my tubes were still open so they are thank god but um they were seeing like a little dip on my ovary on my uterus i'm kind of a bit all over the place because i'm trying to remember what happened but yeah they saw like a little dip and it had like an extra flesh on it so they said that was a polyp and i had to get that removed so i learned of that in august and i did my surgery in december now what causes that no there's no scientific terminology as to what causes a polyp um, it can be for many reasons as I said for mine I had a lot of scar tissues from the mere fact that I did a fibroid removal back in January let me drink my tea now when I learned that I had to do the surgery I wanted to do it as quickly as possible but i was scared because of i knew i kind of knew what the procedure was gonna be and like recovery and stuff like that and i was going i'm going to school my i'm homeschooling my daughter and i'm managing my business right but anyways i wanted it to be sooner than later so my doctor scheduled it for december 28th and um prior to that i had to do a lot of pre-operative appointments such as like the anesthetic part of it because i had to get general anesthesia um i had to do a covid test which was horrible it was really 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 bad <laughs> nervous dun, 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 i'm nervous i'm nervous mr sir Good morning. What can we do for you? I have a um, COVID testing COVID um, for testing. my surgery. And what time? 10-10. You see that code zone sign? Mm-hmm. Head towards it and just go a little bit to the right. Hi, morning. Tiana Manderson Rose. Don't be your 10-10 picture is here. 10-10 picture. Okay, when I lower this rope, you're going to go right next door. Or it says hot zone. They're gonna come out. They're gonna swap. They'll put you in my 
So if you have sinus oh. issues, this COVID <laughs> test is not for you. What the frick is that? And I had to do like uh, a lot of blood work, like autoimmune blood work. Thank God your girl is clean. But um, yeah, I had to do a lot of blood work, autoimmune blood work. Last December, January, okay. I was really low on blood. So I had to get IV infusions and then come in and check it and then okay. I had a surgery. Oh, okay. Well, you yeah. seem to be doing much better now. I am, but I have another surgery. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, oh my God, this oh, is yeah. so bad. The scar tissue. Yeah. Yeah. Check my iron again and my iron level is so good hasn't depreciated since january which is awesome i'm staying on top of my pills i'm taking two iron tablets per day so that's good um yeah so that's what i did to prepare for my surgery now the day of surgery right so the day my surgery was at eight o'clock and 8 a.m and doing a surgery during a pandemic is like one of the worst things ever first of all you're already nervous you're already in the back of your head you're already going going to go through a procedure and then having to deal with covid it's just like it's it, it's just it's just a lot of work
I love you. Mommy soon come back, okay? Okay. Let me taste the man's stuff on the mouth, babe. Keep it out. Are they gonna put you to sleep? Yes, ma'am. Okay, hold on. So when you're the friends, I'm gonna sleep. Mm -hmm. Alright. Love y'all. Love you too, ma'am. Do you have a mask? Give them, give them family number and page number. Just in case, they know the phone system. Oh, okay. guys so i am at the va hospital y'all can see the flags poor <laughs> poor was gone for two weeks so i didn't have time in this year i didn't have for two weeks so all right y'all so i am waiting for them to come get me from the theater um it was a bad experience trying to get this IV started. They actually pierced me once and then pierced me again. So, yeah, I'm just gonna chill out and just wait on them to come and get me. Um, basically, what they're saying is I have a lot of scar tissues because of the IV that I've been getting for my iron. So, it has a lot of not blockage, but it's hard. So, I'm not feeling my best so yeah but I will touch base with you guys when I'm done hopefully I can talk or something but see you guys soon right there so the issue that I'm having with the IVs that I'm um, last year when I was getting the iron infusions every week because I was getting the needle stuck in my arm it left a lot of scarring so because of that i have other places where scar tissues are located in my body so for instance here in the what do you call this whatever here is called i have a lot of scar tissues here and you can feel them and in this one too i have a lot of scar tissues and you can see like where i get injections so when i was when they were preparing me for my IV on Monday, it was horrible. I was in tears. I'd never cried when I'm getting an injection, never. But this time it was so bad because after they inserted the needle, it wasn't going anywhere because the scar tissue was blocking it. And they had to put the catheter, I don't know what it's called, but it's like that other thing that goes in the arm. And I just told her to take it out. So she had to take it out of this arm and then she put it right here y'all can see it right there so that's where i got this one for monday because this arm is basically done yeah they say i have too many scar tissues here so this arm is basically done but anyways they got it in this arm which is it hurts like it hurts so bad but it's easier when it's in your arm because you know you're not moving here as much as possible so it wasn't so bad um so when they got that in right they had to move me from that section take me to the operating area to wait until um it was my time to go in now my gynecologist dr luca she is the best gyno i've ever met she is she treats me like a person and not a number she is listen i love that woman so much she's the one that did my fibroid removal in january and she's the one that did this surgery again so she kind of she not kind of she knows exactly what she's doing what my aim is you know like just different things she knows and i really appreciate that about her um she respects my privacy i respect her as a doctor and she knows her freaking job like this woman knows her job okay she's very understanding she knows exactly you know the stuff that i like stuff that i don't like and she sits and explains everything to me 
word for word now you know in the medical field they have some terminologies that listen thank god for google because some of the times i don't understand what they're saying and she will explain stuff to me she will draw photos and stuff like that so i really appreciate that um with my gyno no both herself and her assistant kate while i was there waiting both herself and her assistant came out and they spoke to me trying to make me feel comfortable to a point but i was just nervous i was kind of frustrated kind of annoyed because i'm like here i am again it's at the same place where i was january almost the same procedure so it was just it was just a lot it was just a lot to take on mentally now i wanted to pee so bad while i was there waiting i had peed like three times and then i wanted to pee again now bear in mind this time i'm hooked up with all sorts of stuff and i think i think i i took you can see some of them still here i was trying to take some of it off with like alcohol that's the thing that they put all over your body to monitor you hooked up with all of that and i wanted to pee and I had to go to the bathroom. I said, I really need to pee before I start this procedure. So I had to go to the bathroom with all of that hooked up to me. That was a hot mess, but I got to pee and that's what matters. Um, then Dr. Lucas came out and um, they rolled me back to the operating room. And this was like deja vu. It's like, just even here thinking about it, I'm getting a headache. Like i saw this already like i've been through this already i've been here already i know that table i know you're gonna move me from what that one put me over that one and it was just so so real i'm like god i'm doing this again the same year but anyways i went in and they moved me from the bed that i was on onto the operating um bed and strapped my hands down strap my feet um put my butt in like a hole now this time as i said they weren't in doing any incisions on the tummy they were going through the vagina so of course y'all know i was like this but i didn't feel any of that because when i went in i was on the bed and then um they gave me some medications through the iv and then um the anesthesiologist told me that he's gonna give me some medicine to fall asleep and dr lucas said just think about i i just need one job from you and i just want you to think about somewhere you'd like to be right now and i just thought about being in dubai and i'm like okay i'm in dubai or i'm in st lucia i'm on the beach and i she was on this arm rubbing my arm and then her assistant was on this arm like just thinking about it like i love them so much because they take care of me you know i'm about to do a major procedure and i didn't feel i was nervous but i wasn't like scared to say they don't know their job and then because i've heard so many horror stories of the va hospital i'm always like on edge but knock on wood i haven't had any bad any bad ensemble with them hopefully i don't but um anyways i just they were just rubbing my hand and one of the doctor was rubbing my head and that was it i don't know anything else i don't know what else happened no there are two stages of recovery right stage one and stage two right Stage one is when you're just finished with the procedure and you're in another, you're in a section when, where they're trying to revive you, they're trying to wake you up. No, I know they were saying Miss Manderson Rose, Miss Manderson Rose, but I, I, I heard it, but I could not answer. And they were like, you know, I could feel them touching me. I could feel them touching my legs and I wanted to pee i wanted to pee so bad i wanted to pee one and i could not find myself to tell them that i wanted to pee no i don't know where i am i just know that i was in a very good sleep or maybe dream i, I don't remember anything but i know that i wanted to pee and 
I couldn't find myself to wake up and say, I want to pee. Y'all know what happened? I peed on myself because I could not, I, I could not, I could not wait. I could not, I don't, I didn't know what to do. Like, I know I want to say I want to pee, but I was in under that. Listen, whatever they gave me, I was not the heck out because I wanted to pee. I felt it. Good thing I could, I could feel it, but I couldn't say it. I couldn't say I want to pee. So I peed on myself. Now, in like, I'm assuming in like another five minutes, I said to the nurse, I want to pee. And when um, she said, oh, you want to pee? She ran for the, the bed tub, the bed thing that they put under your butt for you to pee. When she lifted up my gun, no, I'm in my sleep, but I can hear her. When she lifted up my gun, she was like, oh my God. The pee pee she must see. She put my pee up myself. But I peed again and she changed me and um, yeah i felt fresh i felt brand new i'm like oh, I, I peed but i still wanted to wake up and i could not wake up now when she started talking to me talking to me talking to me i started to come out of whatever they gave me but i started to feel a lot of pain i was in a lot of pain and i know i said to her that i'm in a lot of pain i need something and she gave me something through the iv and then she gave me a um ice a warm pack and a warm towel to put over my tummy and well, dr lucas was there talking to me but i don't recall anything that she said like i can't recall anything that she said i know i know she was there because i saw her but i don't know what she was saying but anyways um after i left i said to the nurse that i need more medication because i'm still feeling pain and i know that she said to me that kind of irritated me i know she said to me if i give you more medication you're gonna have to stay here with me and i'm like what is she talking about but because i'm so doped up i i i, I don't know that they took me to stage two and then i had the absolute best male nurse ever and I am so mad because I did not get his name because I really would like to send him a thank you card. Listen, when I tell you this man was, oh, this man was a blessing. <laughs> you got a bag. <laughs> <laughs> this man was a blessing on my last surgery right when you're out of surgery they give you ice chips my stomach and ice chips and those cold stuff that does not work for me while in recovery too i said to him don't give me anything cold just give me something hot no my eyes were still closed i'm still in my, i'm i i can still feel that i'm sleeping but i know i'm talking and i know what i want i said do not give me anything hot I'm sorry, cold. It has to be hot. And he was like, uh, he doesn't know where he's gonna find that from. But I said, even if you can hot some water and give it to me, I don't want it cold. He said he had um ginger ale. He said he had ginger ale. He'll warm it. And I remember smiling and I'm like, whatever it is, just do not give me anything cold. Because listen, that feeling that I had in January when they gave me that cold drink. I almost passed out so I knew I didn't want anything cold anyways about I don't know how long he took but I knew I saw him rushing in with two cups of um he made me peppermint tea and he made me something else I don't know what it was it was another type of tea tasted really bad but it was hot peppermint was typical peppermint no sugar didn't care just wanted something really hot and he brought me some crackers he brought me some saltine crackers and some graham crackers and he also brought me some um that oat thing like uh i don't remember what it's called it's a snack though and i took two 
I sat up and I took two big gulps of the peppermint tea and let me tell you I was burpy if y'all know me y'all know me a Oloman and I love me some tea I love my tea so I was burping like I was drinking a bleh, bleh. it was horrible but anyways um i had that and then i drank the um the i ate the saltine crackers then i ate the graham crackers then i asked him can i have some more graham crackers no stick up in i did not eat since 12 o'clock the night before right because i had to stop eating 12 o'clock the night before and my report time was eight o'clock so i had to be at the hospital at eight and my surgery wasn't until about 12 12 30 last time i looked on the clock it was like 12 05 so just imagine that's like from 12 to 12 that's 12 hours and in the morning i had to take um my pills for anxiety and my migraine pills so i was taking these pills didn't eat listen i did not want that feeling again but um the gentleman the nurse i wish i had his name he was so nice to me gave me the hot tea and trust me i was feeling brand new however even now like talk sitting down talking about two days after it's two days after i still have that nauseous feeling that comes and goes comes and goes where i can be up for so long i have to go lay down and stuff like that but yeah that was the only thing that was happening to me like i was very nauseous and i didn't want to say that i was very nauseous because i didn't want to stay overnight i wanted to come home and thank you father for my husband and my daughter they were outside they waited on me the entire day all right guys so dr lucas actually just called she just called but um yeah she was just going over my medications with me and just telling me what she found and stuff like that she actually said so ironic that i'm talking about her and she called but she said she found a lot of scar tissues and they were very thick like very very thick so there we go so she had to give me medication for them to they, it's a possibility that they will come back but the medications that i'm taking now will slow the growth of them so yeah but continuing um so yeah so my husband was there along all along the way um thank god for him i haven't been able to fix a meal as yet but hopefully tomorrow but I did get up today and do my makeup and stuff. But thank God for him. He made sure that I was okay. I took my medications. Um One hour. I'm making just bro Monday night when I got home, I was feeling okay actually. But then as he made me some soup and the first two teaspoon i was just throwing up i was just i was just throwing up and i remember him giving me a bag to say babe throw up in this and i could not i the, the furthest i went the closest that i the closest stop was the jacuzzi and i just put my head over and i was bringing up everything i was just throwing up throwing up throwing up it was horrible and he was eating he was eating and he had to stop and he was there rubbing my back and i was just throwing up and he just washed it out just with his hand and he would oh, yeah next that wasn't that was very disgusting i was i felt ashamed you know to have him doing that i felt really bad but yeah thank god for my husband thank god like lord knows lord knows but monday night after i um brought up after i vomited i was feeling a little bit better i ate and then i went to sleep and then tuesday i was in bed all day um for some reason when i get anesthetic 
it takes a while to wear out so even though i'm still a little bit oozy like i'm sleepy here and there in between but Maybe I'm doing some much persons are gonna today. be like why didn't you say anything or whatever um you know to be honest with you this is 2020 and we have to be realistic with what is happening in the world so many people have their own issues dealing with um there's just so many things happening and i'm at a point in my life right now where if you're not for me like 100% don't be for me like 99% that's where i'm at right now so i didn't say it to i maybe like my parents and like two other persons knew but that's about it and people have their own shit dealing with i don't want to be i don't want to have i don't want my issues to be a burden to anybody at any point in time so that's why i decided not to say anything um as i said i knew about this from august and i didn't know when my surgery was because i was actually supposed to do it at another facility um but i knew it was coming and i knew i wanted it before the year ended and thanks to my doctor she pulled through and she got me on the schedule but as i said i just didn't want to burden anybody with my issues whatever i'm going through um if i decide to put it out there after discussing it with my husband then i will but apart from that it i mean i just don't want anybody to be burdened or feel like they are obligated to check in on me or you know feel like oh god you don't want next surgery again let me just say hey how are you i don't want that i'm not looking for any pity um this is my journey actually this is my story this is my testimony and i know a lot of women out there are going through this and way worse like sometimes you hear some stories and you're like damn son like yo you've been going through that all along but yeah i know a lot of females out there are going through a lot worse than what i'm going through so i hope this can enlighten someone i'm sure when i put the word out there a lot of persons had to go google it i had to google it and when you look up hysteroscopy on um youtube you're seeing like some old videos like years ago videos and you're like what like no one had done this procedure in 2000 like are you kidding me so that's why i decided to put this video out there and as i said my channel is about health lifestyle home decor so i decided to share it um but yeah 2020 has taught us so many things like for me to do two surgeries in one year and how ironic my surgery in january was january 27th and this surgery was december 28th how ironic right I, 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 i'm a month apart to say because next month is january but this is my story this is my journey um females go through a lot and for the males who don't understand a female body or don't understand why we do the stuff that we do go do your research go google google has everything google has all the symptoms all the whys the don'ts the yes the no's go google it um and just live life to the fullest like i had no idea i would be doing another surgery at the end of the year but thank god i still have a life i i'm still healthy i just need to do some weight now and i <laughs> just live life like just be happy be thankful that i actually overcame a surgery during a pandemic with the grace of god and i knew about this while going to school as i said i knocked out another semester i achieved so much in the last few months so if i can do it you can do it all is not lost in other words all is not lost so don't give up hope and for whatever reason that you're whatever issues that you're having whatever female issues that you're having whether it's thyroids pcos um 
anything that you're having in the uterus area take care of it if you can because it leads to other things and if you if you're not in an area where healthcare is prominent or you can't get good health care it can be really risky so get checked out know how your inside is looking um my doctor just called so i have to go do another um saline thing to where they look in the uterus and ensure that in there is clean and everything so this is my journey this is my journey this is my story um this path was cut out for me by god this is tiana's journey but i'm gonna end the video right here thank you guys so much for watching um stay safe stay prayed up and happy new year when it comes i don't know if i'm gonna be able to post another video before 2020 ends but happy new year when it comes and i wish you nothing but the best in 2021 until next time guys thank you guys so much don't forget to subscribe like and comment on this video if you feel some type of way comment on the video all right thank you guys so much i love y'all bye